Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to a pick a card reading in which we tune into the archangels to see what messages are coming through for you guys. And the initial card I pulled here, this is for everybody. This is soul family. This card is an invitation for you to remember that even if you are alone on a mountaintop, no matter how alone and separated you feel, your soul family is always around you. And right now we are all actually connecting to soul family members in new and weird and unexpected ways. If you're having dreams or sometimes just sensations, even when you're awake, as if somebody is with you or you have a dream and there's just somebody talking to you in a dream and you feel like it's really real and you wake up and you felt like you were just with somebody that you know, even though maybe the figure in the dream was a complete stranger to you. That is your soul family coming through. We are all starting to connect up, like our networks are reactivating and we are coming coming back together even when we're not meeting uh, in the physical. And some of us are meeting up in the physical, even if only just for moments passing on the street. Um, but those, those moments, you might recognize them. You might actually pass somebody and go, hey... <laughs> That's that that person. They're part of my soul family. You might you might make eye contact, or you might not even uh, notice each other really. But you'll know it, it's it's very interesting. Those moments know that you guys are exchanging codes, and your energies are syncing up when that happens. And even if you don't talk, or even if you don't make eye contact or anything, on a higher level, you guys are are syncing up, and you are together. So. Beautiful message to start us off, and let's go ahead and get into the piles. Hey, Pile One, welcome to your reading. I kind of just want to sound like a 12-year-old girl. I just want, I just look at this, and I just want to go, aww. <laughs> like, there's just some, something so cute and sweet, and I never get to see just a wonderful, healing, happy family time <laughs> spread. Um, especially it's just, it really follows up from that soul family card we got just for everybody and you guys are really feeling it. You've got the four of wands, which, you know, to me, this is the party castle. This is home. This is stability. This is everything being peaceful and pleasant and joyful in your home environment and that really ripples out but the key is in your home and even if you're traveling or even if you're not at home you know your home is within yourself right your home doesn't have to be your physical house it, it can be something you feel with your soul family with particular people or just deep inside of yourself so don't get too fixated on you know home as in house it's home as in home right <laughs> and four of swords so this is a period of deep rejuvenation and it was I saw four like just four zero zero when I said that we got four 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 that is four 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 that is obviously the angel number and this is an angel reading so <laughs> here you guys go with the angels coming through for you really I think wanting you to just take this moment out take this time out I don't know what you guys it's going to be different for everybody obviously what you guys went through leading up to this point but this is a moment for you guys to just chill out and really put down some roots metaphorically or physically and just take a time out you need to take it like you know sleep for 16 hours if you feel like it eat a whole pizza and a bucket of ice cream if you feel like it whatever you need to do you know stand with your feet in the ocean if you can just whatever you need to do to feel good because you're in a period of of healing physically like i feel like you guys might have had to work a lot recently and this is your moment of just Ah, <sighs> like somebody who's been working, you know, 60 hours a week for for 10 years and then finally gets to a beach in Hawaii, like that level of just deep relaxation. And this is happening with your with your family because we have, you know, the four of wands, you got your root chakra, this card here with the dolphins all about play. This is about, you know, not needing to take everything so seriously, even your spirituality. If you guys have been on a really deep spiritual journey you are realizing right now that it doesn't need to be so intense and like by the book all the time you don't need to be meditating every day you don't need to be constantly doing your rituals you don't need to be doing this this and that like 
because people can get people can take their spiritual journeys really seriously, which is great until you get into a point where you're kind of almost in like work mode with your spirituality. It doesn't need to be like that. We don't need to be ascetics. We don't need to be priests. We don't need to be monks. We don't need to be super, even super focused on it all the time. Sometimes the most spiritual thing we can do is to just take a chill pill and spend some time with our family and some good food and some some deep nurturing rest because you guys are going to be like this period doesn't it doesn't last forever it's not like you get to sit here in this wonderful period of almost like you get to bliss out for a few days or a few weeks or hopefully some of you a few months but that doesn't last forever so make sure to enjoy it and to get the most out of this because Man, just your cup runneth over, Ace of Cups. This is really cool because I have been thinking about the Ace of Cups a lot lately. Um, I recently did a video about embodying love because that has been a message I have been really receiving. Like I'm feeling really called to just sit and like vibrate in frequencies of love. And I'm starting to get better and better at that. I can sit in meditation and I can just, I can just like bliss out feeling and when I feel like that, I think of the Ace of Cups and just the waters runneth over, just your cup spilleth over. And what happens when you get into that point is your creativity, your ability to operate in life, it, things stop becoming chores because and things stop becoming work because you're no longer operating from a place of scarcity mentality. You're no longer thinking, oh, I can't give to people because I need to keep for myself. It's like you're giving from a place of overflow. You just have this overflow of love and enthusiasm and just everything is beautiful and when the waters are spilling like literally spilling over like gushing up and out out of your soul and spilling over well you can share that water with everybody because you got more than you know what to do with and it's just running off of you <laughs> uh for some of you that's that's where you're going right you guys i think right now you're more like getting grounded with your root chakra right here you're getting centered, you're finding your stability, you're going to be going through your period of rest and that Ace of Cups, what I was just talking about, that your cup runneth over and really learning to channel frequencies of love, literally just for the sake of channeling frequencies of love, just because, well, that feels awesome for you. And look how that's helping everybody because now you're this like overflowing, gushing fountain of love. Think about how much of a service that is to the whole collective. So yeah, that is where you guys are going. You're going to be the Ace of Cups flowing you're like a fountain <laughs> you guys are going to be a fountain of love <laughs> I, lo I love this and furred and feathered friends this is just you know getting in touch with nature because you're getting grounded and you're taking a time out um you know if you guys have pets this is just enjoy them and it is a signal that your spirit animals are around you a lot of us have cats and dogs or birds and fish or whatever and we kind of wonder, you know, could that, could my dog be my spirit animal? Yeah. If you've been, if, if you've been asking that, yes. <laughs> yes, your dog is. Um, I have a, an adorable little chihuahua. And I was actually sitting there going, huh, I wonder if he is a, he, if, he, if he is my spirit animal. Like, you know, because I have a dog and two cats and I love them all. And they're my family. And I just, you know, they're, they're my family. We call them our fur fam. <laughs> around here and I was wondering huh is waffles that's my dog's name is waffles my spirit animal and literally I saw I was watching a YouTube video and the person on the video said spirit animal literally on the at the exact moment that waffles my dog climbed into my lap and I was like oh <laughs> there's confirmation so here's your confirmation whatever animal you've been wondering about is definitely your spirit animal. And this is also pay attention to the animals you are seeing when you're going about your day. Like if you get to go for a peaceful stroll and you see a hare run across your path or a heron fly by and plop down on a roof right next to you. I had both of those happen to me this morning, guys. I was just walking my dog and a desert hare just darted across the path. And I've lived in this desert for six years and that's only the second time I've ever seen a hare. So that was pretty cool. And then I was just walking back through the suburbs and a heron flew right in front of me, which is weird because like I just said, this is the desert. We don't have a lot of herons around here. And if you guys have ever lived around herons, they don't typically fly like low in suburbia right in front of people. So I thought that was really cool. And then he landed on someone's roof right next to me and was staring at me. <laughs> I like I, I literally had to stop and I was like, you know, standing there like I'd like looking at this bird. And it was just super cool because I've never seen... A, a heron perch on a roof 
And where I grew up, there was lots of herons, and I used to see them everywhere, but never on a roof. So just super cool. I've been thinking all day about, you know, what those animal sightings might might mean for me. Um, this is an invitation for you guys to do something similar because the animals are helping you bring in this ace of cups and you can help and you can bring it back to them. It's a symbiotic relationship of, you know, you're a fountain, you're going to be a fountain overflowing with love and the animals are going to be feeding it right back to you. Just like a little infinity symbol of, of water fountains. <laughs> so, and of course we got the dolphins here. Yep. This is, this is very watery, very happy, just very blissful and wonderful. I, you, whatever you guys have done to get here, congratulations. All your hard work has paid off and this is the reprieve you've been waiting for. If you're not there yet, it is coming really, really soon. You might be sitting, some of you might be sitting more in the process of getting grounded, in the process of finding your stability, but just do that and then go through your period of time out, your deep healing, your deep regeneration do not feel bad about taking your time off, about getting the, the rest and recovery you need. You, you deserve it. And this is your sign, you know, play, play and rest. And then you'll be moving into this <laughs> period of just reciprocal love flowing out of everywhere. Um, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for existing and vibrating at this frequency so that I got to tune into this wonderful uplifting energy of your guys's. Um, I love you guys. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pal two, welcome to your reading. You guys are being activated all over the fucking place. The first thing I thought of when I popped up these two cards is all this indigo, your third eye is being activated. But then I was staring at it and I was like, well, it's not just their third eye. It's their crown chakra, it's their throat chakra, personal power. So that's, you know, your solar plexus and your sacral chakra. And all of this is, you know, you got eight of cups. This is for me always the spiritual journey card. You guys are about to re-up your spiritual journey. If you haven't really been on much of a spiritual journey before, well, welcome to the party. You guys are now in the door. You guys have gone through the portal and you're about to go down the rabbit hole. If you have already been on your journey, walking your path for however long it's been, this is something entirely new coming in for you. You're going to have a whole new level of understanding. It's like you're <laughs> ascending up through the dimensions and you're going to be, re be reaching a the perspective of a, of a new dimension, basically. So like uh, right above this eight of cups, the spiritual journey card, you got beyond the mind something. So there's definitely some kind of paradigm shift here where you had, well, you probably still do right now, but there is some kind of belief system, like a thought structure that has been, you know, been the scaffold to your life and it is crumbling away. It's crumbling away. You're having to turn your, your back to it. That could be really anything. Just think of it. It's that kind of energy, some kind of scaffolding energy that has been holding your life together. For some people, that's a religion. For some people, that's uh, academia, you know, your, your major in university, like your, your field, uh, it can be a relationship. It can be like a family structure, something, or even just your general understanding of what reality is. If you just if you have a certain idea about how reality works, well, your your mind is about to be blown. You're going beyond the mind, beyond the mind with this page of swords. You're going to have to step out into the unknown, like. It's like your your mental constructs are being rebooted. There's a reboot to your mental constructs. Page of Swords is all about new embodiment of mental energy. And that is just this beyond the mind card is really, really calling to me here. She's downloading new information, new data, new codes from the universe and processing that in her third eye, finding a new way to see the world. And you're going to be speaking it out through your throat chakra. So I feel like this could be really quick for you guys. Um, partly because you were always meant to go through this. You're, you are in the initial phage, fa phages, <laughs> initial phases of some kind of training. And, you know, we're always being trained for something. We just don't know it. Your job at McDonald's 
that wasn't really training you to work at McDonald's. You were going through some kind of life lesson when you worked at McDonald's. It was maybe learning social skills or maybe you were observing all of the customers or your coworkers and learning how humans worked and just the things you, the things we can learn from stupid little jobs has nothing to do with the stupid little job itself. That's just the human level excuse. But on the level of our consciousness, we're put into these really weird scenarios. They're like, they're like life mini games. We're in these little mini games of life. And you guys have been extracting lessons from that really, really abstract lessons from something as mundane as working at McDonald's. And now because you've gone through all of these mini games, you've done all these lessons, you guys are ready to like compile up really fast. I keep thinking of computer analogies. Um, you know, sometimes like computers need to compile shaders or something when they're loading a, a video game, compiling shaders. It's like you guys have downloaded so many new codes and they're going to be stacking up and your consciousness processor is going to be going through them really fast because it's unlocking your personal power. This is really about the beginning of your life's mission, why you came here, why you're here. And it's almost like you guys were in like a sleeper cell. You guys were, you came here with a mission and deep down inside you always kind of knew that, but you just never knew what it was or when it would be time for you to wake up. And now, now it's now, you guys are being activated. It's time to go, time to go now. So all of this information is coming in really quick. You guys might be having ascension, ascension flu, ascension symptoms. You know, if I could go through the list, but you know, if anything is just going on with you, just observe it and try to get through it. You know, extreme mood swings, extreme swings in weight loss or weight gain, not eating, not sleeping, sleeping too much, eating too much. Uh, physical sensations in your body, feeling like there's bugs crawling all over you, feeling like there's energy coming out of your hands, really weird headaches, uh, shivers, um, pains or tenderness in anywhere, in any part of your endocrine system. So, you know, that's your reproductive system. That's your adrenal glands, which are on top of your kidneys. So two points in the middle of your back, um, your third eye, third eye headaches. You guys are probably all having third eye headaches. Um, and also like, you might think, if you ever think you have an ear infection, if your ears hurt, your throat hurts, if your lungs feel weird and your heart feels weird, those are all, I mean, obviously like you guys use your discernment, figure out when you need to go to a regular doctor and get physically checked out. But if you do get checked out and all comes back as nothing and you still feel like there's these things going on, it's because all of this is activating your chakras and and so many levels to your energy body and it really just the physical symptoms can go on for years really <laughs> i mean they, they tend to morph and change you know but just just pay attention if you're if your lungs and your heart feel weird and you know you don't have any lung and heart problems you're, you're sure of that and you've had that checked out well <sighs> that's your heart chakra clearing out i had i was having like weird lung problems for a few months and then I, it took me a little bit to clue in that uh, it was major, major clearings going on in my heart chakra. So I don't know, just throwing that out there for you guys. If you have weird stuff going on physically, weird aches, weird pains, weird, weird symptoms, and that especially if you have doctors telling you that there's nothing wrong with you, um, it's because of this major activations and clearing you guys are going through. And this is all happening to you because it is time for you to remember, time for you to wake up, time for you to receive all this information really quickly. You guys are going to have a really rapid awakening, very rapid awakening. Um, and it's going to be unique to you, unique gifts. Look, I was just talking about the heart chakra activating. Here it is, heart chakra activating. Look at all this light language on the side. Do you guys ever see, when you close your eyes, do you ever see things that look like letters? In, on the backs of your eyelids, but they're no language or alphabet that you've ever seen, but you feel like you should be able to read it. Those are light language codes. Those are light language codes. Um, and this all culminates in the King of Wands. That's what I was talking about. You guys being finally being called to step up because the King of Wands has all the power of manifestation, all the power of magic, all the power to be the power. The King of Wands does whatever the fuck he needs to do. He does whatever the fuck he wants. Personal power, so much power. <laughs> so, but first, 
your past paradigm has to fall away. And I know exactly how painful and traumatic that is that can make you feel like you are losing your entire identity. <sighs> I mean, there's nothing you guys can really do to mess this up. This level of like busting out of the matrix can't really be stopped. Just every morning when you wake up, go, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this one more day. I'm, you know, remind yourself that you were open to the experience. You're just going to keep working through it and, you know, set long-term goals. Go, okay, I'm going to check in on this experience in three months and see how I'm doing. And then in six months, it's going to unfold perfectly. Just right now, it will seem very messy because your mind is being blown and you're leaving behind your past paradigm. Um, don't worry about any, like, I identity loss because... As the months and as the rest of the year goes by, eventually you're going to figure out like, wow, I was never losing my identity. I was getting back to my actual identity. You guys are going to be tuning into your actual soul's frequency to your the true, most authentic nature of your consciousness. And so much of the ego that you've built up in this life isn't isn't really you. None of that was really part of your identity. So let it go. For a while, you'll feel like you might not have an identity, but you're going to come to understand if you can just hang in there for, for enough months as this goes by, and I promise that this makes sense as this goes on, <laughs> you're going to be feeling so much more yourself. You're going to be feeling better than before. And I mean, your cards are all awesome. I've kind of been talking like, you know, oh, you know, hang in there, guys, but your cards are all awesome. These are all awesome cards. It's only that this is just really intense because you're going to have a really rapid, a rapid, rapid expansion of your consciousness, a really rapid activation. And ascension really i'm not super into the word ascension because it has all kinds of connotations that just kind of make me feel eh but you know that word does apply here you guys are ascending rapidly and that is <laughs> that's messy it's messy um but if it one thing to keep in mind is if you came here to be in this sleeper cell and then to be rapidly activated and to rapidly expand so that you could unlock your unique gifts and become the king of wands what does that say about the your actual nature you wouldn't have been put you wouldn't have put yourself in this position if you weren't ready for it and if you hadn't done this before you would not be in this position if you couldn't handle it and what kind of being can handle it what kind of being can handle what you've been through and what you're going through right now think of all the trillions upon trillions of beings in all of the multiverse who did not come here to do what you're doing right now. That really, if you just really think on that, let that sink in, that really speaks to the amount of power, to the powerful being that you are, to the amount of power that you have, and to all of the experiences you've been through in all of your past lives, wherever you've been. So much power, and it is all unlocking right now like this this fiery fist here so <laughs> this is a super exciting time guys i i'm really excited for you and just welcome to the party and it is so good to feel you guys coming online because the world needs people just like you doing exactly what you're doing being exactly who you are so i'll see you guys in the ether bye hey pile three welcome to your reading I feel like you guys are confused, <laughs> to say the least, frustrated and conflicted. Like you've been trying to keep it together, Queen of Pentacles, you've been trying to keep it together for a really long time and you're feeling pretty defensive and exhausted about all the effort. Um, yeah, these, these, these three tarot cards, Queen of Pentacles, Nine of Wands and Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords has been haunting everybody lately, I think. And I'm, I've am i been coming to a new understanding of the Seven of Swords, actually. It's not only this, oh, the guy is stealing the swords and he's slicing himself up in the process. It's not just that energy of deceit. I think we've really gotten hung up on the, like, the Rider weight depiction of the Seven of Swords. But I'm starting to feel that the more archetypal energy of the seven of swords is someone's emotions getting the better of them. And that maybe that isn't even really the best way to put it. It's emotions overcoming the rational mind. It is. And sometimes that can be really good. Sometimes that can be exactly what we need. 
sometimes when your emotions kind of blast out, they can blast you out of a box. Your emotions can shatter glass ceilings. Just, I, I'm really thinking of somebody in a glass box and just finally, you know, they've been keeping it together, keeping it together, but finally just getting so exhausted and frustrated and done that they just, they just let their emotions out and blast through the box. And it was like, okay, so for all of that time, you guys have been trying to play by the rules. You've been trying to be, be rational, be logical, be sensible, keep it together, just be probably be the person who keeps it together for everybody else. Be the person who really wears the sensible shoes. Queen of Pentacles. Somebody wearing wearing the sensible shoes. Somebody maybe always the, being the person who solves everybody else's problems. And just being someone's rock. Like you guys have been solid. And right now you're just nine of wands. You're you're kind of done with it. You're at your last gasp. Nine of wands always makes me think of Sam and Frodo on their, like on the slopes of Mount Doom. It's the last gasp. You're just, you're so close, but you're just so done at the same time. And that is what has led you to those, those feelings. It's like, finally, you're like a bottle, like somebody has been shaking a pop bottle and just all of that energy that's been shaking around the bottle is just exploding out the top. And I don't think any of this is necessarily bad. Maybe that's exactly what you guys needed. Maybe you guys just needed something to push you to the point where you just pop. Because sometimes that can... <laughs> paradigm shift, exactly. That sometimes if we've been resisting a paradigm shift, we need that kind of explosive energy to make us pop. That's actually the, a really funny thing about, you know, humans is that we go along trying to keep it together, trying to keep it together, pushing down our feelings, trying to keep it together, just trying to play by the rules and keep it together and just always trying to maintain the status quo. Just even in, our, I'm not even really talking about a society thing here. I'm just talking about our own personal lives, just trying to keep everything the same. And we don't realize that we should have given in a long time ago because our fixation on keeping everything the same was preventing a paradigm shift. We're afraid of change. We don't want to change. If we could make it, we could make it so much easier on ourselves if we could see the paradigm shift coming, realize, okay, now it is time to change and to shift, but we usually don't. <laughs> we usually wait until we're exhausted, until we hit rock bottom, and then until we explode. So the good news is that it doesn't matter how you got here. You are now, now it is time. Now is your paradigm shift. That means that nothing is the same from this moment forward. You are entering a whole new way of being, a whole new way of thinking. And for you guys, I feel like you are just... You don't even know where you want to go from here. I feel like now you feel that the structure has been stripped away. Your previous paradigm has been stri stripped away, but you don't know what paradigm is coming up next. You don't know where to go from here. You don't know what structures to build, but you do have this feeling of <laughs> this is all you know. The only thing you know is that you want peace. You want to feel like the lotus flower. <laughs> you just, you want to open up to peace. This is, I think, how you feel. And it's also the advice from the angels for you. Open up, open up like the lotus flower and let these gentle sparkles of divine wisdom, of angelic wisdom to sprinkle down upon you. You are receiving a lot more love and support than you, than you can possibly imagine at this moment. Yeah, I, this is where you guys are at, I feel, or it's where you want to get. Just lean into that. Lean into your peace. And if you don't know where to go, if you don't know what to do next, if you don't know what choices to make or what structures to build, follow your sense of peace. If you feel like turning left will lead you to a peaceful place or turning right will lead you to a peaceful place, go there. Follow. Make peace. Make peace your north star. That is what you want to cultivate. That is where you want to go. Yeah, the sound of the universe. The sound of the universe. This makes me think that some of you are going to be 
developing some clear audience abilities. But it's more than that. This is also learning to harmonize, seeing the harmonies in the universe. It's about transcending mundane reality because you guys were down here in the mundane. Now that you're in your in your new paradigm or you're working towards your new paradigm, you want to be transcending, <laughs> transcending your mundane, transcending your defensiveness and your fatigue and transcending those glass ceilings, those glass boxes and the emotional explosivity that blasted you out of that. I think you'll, you'll get to leave that kind of reactiveness behind if you lean into peace and learn to, yeah, listen to the harmony of the universe. That is going to help you transcend. You guys are going to be seeing, things are going to start to seem magical. You're going to see signs and synchronicities all around you. Like, okay, you guys know how it is when you, you're on your phone or your computer and you were just talking about something. Maybe you were just talking about skiing mittens <laughs> okay. And then suddenly the next ad you see is an ad for mittens and you're like, oh my God, my phone is running a voice capture and it is spying on me and now it's giving me ads. Um, and you think, okay, okay, well, that's the obvious excuse for that coincidence that my phone is spying on me. But then, then you start to see things, those kind of synchronicities, those coincidences, they start happening away from technology entirely. Like you'll have a thought. I have a perfect example. Um, I was walking to the grocery store and I was kept reminding myself, oh, don't forget Ziploc bags, because I knew I didn't put Ziploc bags on my list. So I was thinking Ziploc bags, Ziploc bags, the whole way to the store to remind myself. And I was also thinking about unicorns. I don't even remember why or what, but Ziploc bags and unicorns. That's what I was thinking in my mind, just silently, all the way to the store. And then when I'm going through the till at the grocery store, the guy, some random guy runs up and asks one of the cashiers, hey, do you know where the Ziplocs are? <laughs> And I'm like, damn it, I forgot my Ziploc bags. And oh, well, you know, and then I hear a little girl over there talking about unicorns. And it was one of those moments where I was just like, holy shit. <laughs> like, is the universe just reflecting back at me my own thoughts? Because obviously, if I had been talking about Ziploc bags and unicorns, and then my phone started spitting back ads about Ziploc bags and, uni and unicorns, I would just think that my phone was spying on me, right? But when they were my own personal thoughts inside my own head, and then the universe itself, like other humans, reality, the grocery store reflects that back at me. Wow. You know, <laughs> I don't even need to like, wow. <laughs> those are, those are the, those are the synchronicities and you guys are going to be noticing stuff like that happening. You know, people experience different kinds of synchronicities. It depends on what you notice, depends what you're into, but be open to them. And you can also ask for more of them. Ask for those kind of harmonics to show themselves to you. Ask the angels to show them to you. They will come through. The, and the more you notice them, the more you ask for them, and the more open you are to them, and the more fascinated you are by them, and the more you follow the thread, those little synchronicities, they're, they show you threads to follow. And you just keep going down that path because that is, is how you will find your peace. That is how you will find your peace in your new paradigm. So I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 4, welcome to your reading. I feel like you guys are accessing your Akashic records, and that doesn't have to mean what you might think. Sure, some of you might be able to just literally open the records and read them. <laughs> some people can go through a meditation and just choose to access the records and start seeing stuff about themselves or other people. Um, I mean, I wish I could do that, but I can't. <laughs> but you can still be receiving information from the Akash, from the ether, from the black velvet, from the void, from the seamless unspeakable. As you can see, there are a lot of a lot of different ways to refer to the great data bank or the great prim primordial soup where everything comes from and where everything, everything returns to. For me, I sense it as the void, but the void is full of ether. Have you ever heard me say, see you in the ether? It's because I've been, I've traveled there, I've been there, and you can meet. If, if somebody else is there and you choose to meet up, you can be there. 
we're all there simultaneously in some senses, right? And the ether is this frictionless, this frictionless energy that blows around you, but without blowing. <laughs> it, it is the weirdest thing. The weirdest thing, guys. Uh, but some of you might know what I mean. You might be dreaming of yourselves or seeing yourselves in your light bodies. Your body's made of light in a dark place, but it's not dark and scary. You know, it is dark and full of potential and you can feel these frictionless winds blowing around you. And you can sometimes kind of feel your crown, the top of your head opening up and data like streaming in. These kind of experiences, I mean, the ways they can manifest, it's almost, it's hard for me to talk about. And that's why I was using my own personal experience because the way this kind of experience can manifest is limitless, limitless potential. The seamless unspeakable. It's unspeakable. It's impossible to describe, but you guys are going to be having some kind of experience in which you either travel to the void, gain some kind of knowledge or experience about the void, the, ish, the ether, the akash, or you're going to be literally just able to open up the Akashic records and read them. Um, that's obviously a metaphor for how that really works, right? We use this library and book metaphor, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> um, for others of you, this might end up being like mediumship, being able to speak to disembodied consciousnesses. And I know this is going to be really intense for you guys because you got the three of swords. This three of swords. When you open up to this level of potential and to vastness and guys, along with this activation is going to be coming a lot of memories about your past lives. They can be coming up out of nowhere and those memories come up because there's something about them that is unfinished, something that needs to be healed. And it can cause a lot of pain. And just the simple fact that if you do access the void, that can be really traumatic to your physical body. Um, you can get sick, you know, you can have ascension flu, all, all that kind of thing. So the message here, the message that the angels want you to know is that whatever pain or heartbreak or just physical discomfort you're going through, it is temporary and it is essentially a side effect of the fact that you've touched the seamless unspeakable. You guys have accessed like a massive influx of light, of energy, of mystical energy, right? Of, of source energy. It is all coming in and it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable. It can make you feel like you're losing your damn minds. Okay. <laughs> but you're, you're going to be fine. You're, you're going to be totally fine because this is, you're going to be more than fine. You're going to be fucking awesome because look at this King of Pentacles, King of Pentacles. And on top we have the I am presence. This is you stepping fully, fully, fully into yourself, into the expanded, larger, more authentic, more primordial self. This is major, major connection with your higher self, with all of your other selves, all of the other selves and all of the other places, wherever they are. Some of them could actually be hanging out in the void, living in the ether. You're going to feel once, once the dust settles, once you guys get through this activation where you're like retrieving information from the void, you're, you're going to be leveled up and so much more sure of yourself, so much more sure of your power. And it's really an upgrade to your intentionality. Like this isn't just a spiritual activation that is going to get you to know all of this stuff about the cosmos. It, it is actually coming in to help you live your physical human life. King of Pentacles, I am. You guys are going to be really grounded. It's weird. You have all, all this. I actually, I can really feel it's like a wedge. Any of you feel like there's like a wedge going into the top of your head? Like somebody has been like cracked open the top of your skull and there's like light pouring into it. All of that. So for a while, there's going to be all this energy like rummaging around in your upper chakras and it's going to be really destabilizing. 
Um, you're going to have all kinds of purging, you know, emotional and physical and spiritual and just all kinds of crap. Um, but once that filters down and let that filter down, let that filter all the way down to the center of the earth, you, like intentionally, you can ask Gaia, imagine yourself traveling down to the center of the earth and asking Gaia for, for help digesting all of this, this, this energy, all of these codes and ask her to be in a symbiotic relationship with you where you guys fully exchange codes and because the it's like lightning, right? Lightning wants to go to ground when you, if you've been hit in the head, <laughs> Um, with all this energy, it needs to go to ground. You need to send it down through all of your upper chakras into your heart, going through your heart healing, three of swords, do the heart healing, send it down, down through your root chakra, down to the center of the earth. That will help you digest all of this. And you don't want to be hanging on to all of this energy. You need to keep it moving. You need to keep it flowing. If you try to keep it up in your, up in your third eye, for example, you, you will, you'll essentially manifest psychosis. I know this personally, guys, I, I was on antipsychotics for five years because in 2012, I had such an insane uh, activation that I thought I could shoot fire out of my hands. Um, and I was actually seeing new colors. I was hallucinating. I was running around in the forest by myself trying to find a bear that I could hunt because um, I thought I could electrocute it with my hands. And I could see... I could see things in the forest. I was, I was hallucinating, but now I know that I was actually, my third eye had opened up to the point where I was seeing like ultraviolet. And of course I was like, okay, I'm totally going bad shit crazy. I need to go to the doctor. And I went on antipsychotics. And, uh, this is really a whole really complicated topic that is really hard for me to, art to articulate because long story short is sure. Spiritual people like to say, okay, you know, you show you, like, you know, you're not losing your mind. Don't take medication. You're not crazy. But for me at the same time, I know that, you know, being diagnosed as bipolar and understanding mania and depression and psychosis and taking antipsychotics and anticonvulsions and anti-anxiety and antidepressants. I've, I've taken the whole pharmacy guys. And I know that now that was literally part of my spiritual journey. Taking antipsychotics and antidepressants and benzos was literally part of my spiritual journey. So I don't know if that's relevant to somebody, <laughs> um, but it, it's just, what was my point? I, f I feel like that is relevant to somebody. If, if you are on, if any of you are on medication, I mean, you'll know when it's right, to, when it's the right time to go off of it. I'm off all of my meds now and doing better than ever. And actually, since my awakening, I haven't had any any more bipolar symptoms. It's it's like it just disappeared. Even though I had been bipolar my entire life, but my awakening cured it <laughs> mysteriously. Right? Obviously, there's a lot more to that story, and I have a lot more to say about it. But I can't talk about it all in the reading. But suffice to say, if I just, I feel like there's something here somebody needs to hear about medication. If you feel like you should take medication, then take some. If you feel like you shouldn't take your medication, then don't take it. Do not let anybody tell you to t whether or not you should take your medication, right? The, me the medical people will tell you, will try to pressure you into taking it. And the spiritual people will try to pressure you into not taking it. And both sides will demonize the other side. And everybody will have opinion about what you should be doing and how you should be handling your, your experiences. You are the only one who gets to make that decision. And just know that you don't need to take the medication. You, you don't, but you also can. And it's entirely possible that taking the medication is part of your path. It was for me. It taking I don't regret taking the medication at all. It was totally the best thing I could have done for those five years. It was awesome. And then it, and when it was time to go off of them, that was awesome. So that was a tangent there. I probably maybe even just for one person, but <laughs> but there you go. So the whole spiel, my point was, you do not want to let all of that energy stay floating around in your third eye because that's when you manifest psychosis. That's what happened to me in 2012. Obviously, in 2012, there was a major influx of energy, right? And I was not grounding that energy. I didn't know how to process it. I didn't know what was happening to me. I didn't even think I had a soul at that point in my life. So I was just keeping it all up in my third eye. And, you know, I went totally crazy and could have gotten myself killed because I thought I could fight a bear with the electricity that I could shoot out of my hands. So, you know, don't do that. Ground that energy. Ground it. Um, and I am sure that you guys are going to navigate this fully and completely because look at this full spectrum. That's exactly what I was saying. Send that energy all the way down through all of your chakras because this energy is here to like, you guys are going to be having a, uh, like installing a new chakra system. You know, we don't need this old, this old, uh, 
janky seven chakra, like really locked down, really limited, really linear chakra system, you can transmute your chakras, you can change them, you can take them out, you can do all kinds of crap. You don't need to be limited to this traditional seven chakra system because it's really only been for a few thousand years that we've been um, living with that. So I feel like, yeah, you guys <laughs> could absolutely be getting a whole new upgrade to your whole energy system. And this all ends with justice, which is just balance. You guys are going to end in balance. If you feel out of balance right now, if you're feeling a little bipolar, if you're feeling manic and then depressed and then manic and depressed and then psychotic in between, um, don't worry about it because the scales are going to balance. The scales are going to balance and everything is going to be, you know, I, I, this sword really, this, this justice, these scales, it is all balancing on the sword. I feel like that is the sword of Archangel Michael. He is here watching out for you guys and he's going to help you find balance. If you feel like you need protection, call in Michael. If you feel like you need empowerment, you guys don't exactly need empowerment. You're pretty fucking empowered, but you might need help <laughs> finding the balance. I, I really feel like there's an invitation from Michael here, just reminding you guys that, you know, you can call on him for whatever you need and he can really help. And there's also something here. If you ever call on the archangels and then you fall asleep and then you wake up and go, oh, that didn't work. I didn't actually communicate. They didn't actually come and help me because I just fell asleep. No, if you fell asleep, that's actually a sign that it worked. They did come. They did hear you. You did succeed. They came and healed you, worked on your energy body while you were asleep. I know I almost always fall asleep when I feel the archangels come in. I think it's just because, well, their energy is a lot to handle and it can kind of make me feel like really drugged up, really, really doped up and I just fall asleep. And also if you're going to be receiving that level of healing, why not be asleep for that, right? It's more effective to be asleep. So I feel like that might be relevant to somebody if you, if you keep worrying, oh, I'm meditating and doing this and doing that and it's never working because I keep falling asleep. Let yourself fall asleep just drift off, you know, because sometimes you're not even falling asleep. Sometimes you're just losing your conscious mind. Sometimes your consciousness is actually being taken out, put somewhere else. And you might be astrally traveling. You might be having all kinds of experiences. But when you come back into your body, you don't remember any of it. And you're just, you think you were asleep. So there's a lot more going on. Don't worry about falling asleep when you're meditating or trying to communicate with any kind of being. It's, it's fine. The sleep is fine. <laughs> so I don't know, guys. Holy crap, you, this is, this is a next level activation with the amount of energy coming in from the void, from the ether. It's like primordial energy itself is being streamed down into your crown chakra and you're going to be getting a whole new upgrade to your entire light body and it is here to help you ground. You need to make sure you're grounding this energy though, guys, like please really make sure you're working it down through your feet out into the core of the earth. You need to get, you need to get grounded with Gaia. You need to get grounded. You need to send this energy right through you. And then you'll be able to live in a whole new level of prosperity because these kind of activations don't happen just to let you continue to wander around feeling lost and confused. You will now have such a firmer grasp with a firmer connection with your higher self that your powers of manifestation, your powers to accomplish your earthly mission and your earthly desires and goals, it, it's going to be so much easier. Things get so much easier after this, guys. You just have to get through this uh, like messy, traumatic, spontaneous awakening and activation that you guys are having. So, But it's all going to be good and it's all going to be worth it. So hang in there, guys. I love you guys so much and see you in the ether. Bye.